So we're out in the shop, and in this episode, we are going to be focusing on my first ever hidden tang knife. Now, up to this point in the different episodes, we've been focusing all on the blade. In this episode, we're going to show you how we did the whole entire handle on here, and a few things that I had to think through during this process. Now, the goal for this episode is just to let y'all see all the footage. I'm going to do a voiceover, talk about what's going on in the different clips, and hopefully give y'all some insight into some of the decisions that I made while doing this particular build. There's a few things that I did a little bit different than what I typically see people do on hidden tang knives. And that's just the way that my brain works and my thought process behind it. So y'all just sit back, relax, watch this whole process, and we'll talk more about it in the outro. So we're gonna start this off with the cutting out of the bolster. Now, this is just the Mocha Megane scrap that we had, and I figured it would make a really good bolster for this knife. I wanted to cut it out first because we need to focus on this to set the base for all the rest of the handle because this is the part that's going to match up to the Ricasso area on the knife. Everything else is going to be built off of it. We need to square everything up and then mark a center line so that we knew where to actually use our punch to get our stuff set up for the holes that we're going to be drilling through this. Now, I end up doing the same measurement process for the G10 spacer and the wood for the handle itself, so I knew where to drill on all of those. What we're going to be doing is drilling through the center, and then I'm going to use the drill bit to kind of open up the holes to connect them, and then once we get that part done, I'm going to replicate that onto the G10 and the handle material. So we're going to be drilling holes and then connecting them with the drill bits that we're using to drill those holes. So once we get the bolster part done, we'll move on to the piece of G10, get the holes drilled in it, and then get it opened up. And the whole point behind that is so that we can end up fitting a needle file in there and getting everything nice and squared up for the tank. So we're going to start off with one of our smaller files. This isn't exactly a needle file, this is just a small Nicholson file. And it worked perfect to start filing away the material and squaring everything up to be able to start fitting the tang in here. Now, this is a new process for me. I'm not used to this whole tang fit up with bolsters like this because I do all full tang guys. So this was a a new thought process for me you know even though i've watched a lot of videos on this by aaron and dennis from ailey knives and tyrell knifeworks it's still something that you have to actually think through when you're doing it because you don't want to go too crazy with the filing and make it to where your bolster is loose in the fit up process you still want it to be tight and you want to be able to kind of hammer it into place so that it's nice and snug for the life of the knife. So once we got it kind of figured out where I needed to file, I just finished filing that area and then we were able to get it to where it fit up pretty close. But one of the steps that we need to do is hammer it on the rest of the way. So we're just gonna be using a piece of leather wrapped around the blade and then another piece of leather that I cut a slit into and that's going to protect the bolster while we're using this 19 millimeter socket to kind of hammer it down onto the tang so that it meets up with the Ricasso area. Again, another new step that I've never had to do before. But I've seen the guys do uh, this a few different times and it was pretty helpful. So we still have a little bit of a gap at the top. And instead of filing the blade to make it match the bolster, it was actually a lot easier for me to modify the bolster a little bit to make it match the blade. So that's the route that I went. And I got a nice clean fit up after that. I will tell you, taking this bolster off was something I had to think through. I just had to bend a piece of angle iron and 
use it with that leather piece with the slit cut into it to be able to hammer it back off. Now, once we got that part done, it's time to use the G10. All we did was file it down the same way as we did the bolster and it fit up absolutely perfect. It was nice and tight, it didn't wiggle around. I was really pleased with how it turned out. But once we got both those done, now it's time to move on to the handle area. So with this, I've watched a lot of videos and I would say the easiest thing to do on this was to put the wood block in my drill press vise and just angle it to where the drill bit matched up to that V shape that I drew on the side there and just drill straight down into it at two different angles and then once we got the holes all the way down to where we wanted to be and got it fully drilled we went ahead and just used our drill bit to connect those two holes to create the actual channel that the tang is going to sit into. Now I will tell you the reason why I left this block bigger or wider is because I knew that I was going to have to square it off so I needed some material that I could remove. But once we got everything drilled we went ahead tried our tang in there it was still too tight so I went and I used a skill saw blade and just a pair of vice grips clamped it in there and just worked that wood out until I was able to fit the tang in there and have a nice fit up. I will tell you I went through this step about four or five times before I actually got it to fit up exactly how I wanted it to which is like this right here I wanted it to go in there, but still be snug whenever it got set fully in there. Again, to minimize the risk of rattles or something like that. Now, we got everything put together here. Now it's time to go ahead and start squaring this handle to the blade. So I just took my battery bank that I have right here that's actually really square and set the Ricasso down on it and then just took a marker and worked all the way around the handle material to start getting an idea of how crooked this block of wood is onto this. Again, I left a lot of excess so I could grind it off, but you can see that block of wood is pretty crooked on there. So one of the steps that we're gonna need to do now is go ahead and square this off because I am going to need to drill a hole through this for the pin that's going to be going in during the glue up. So I need to go around and square all four sides just to make sure that we have that good base for all the rest of the steps that we're going to be doing. And you'll see that we'll end up squaring this a couple of times during this process just to make our lives a little bit easier. Once I was able to go through and remove the material that was making it all out of whack, I was able to go through and actually put the ting back in there and see how well it matched up. And that little marker with that battery bank definitely worked out real well to make it to where it matched up that bolster almost perfectly. That was a trick that I saw from Dennis at Tyrell Knife Works. Now, with the glue up on this, I'm really used to doing a glue up on full tang knives. So trying to figure out a camera angle to do this whole process, that's going to be a work in, uh, in progress, I guess you could say. This wasn't exactly the best camera angle, but I wanted you to see what I did. So we got the epoxy on the tang and the bolster and then epoxy the spacer and then we had to go through and pour a whole lot of epoxy down into the handle itself I wanted to put more than I thought was necessary so that whenever I actually put the tang into the handle that epoxy would squeeze out of the pinhole so that whenever I put the pin through it there would be epoxy all in that hole 
and we just knew that we were going to have a nice mechanical bond on everything that made up this particular handle. So once we got the pin in there, it's time to go ahead, clamp it into place, which again was a completely new process for me. I had to go buy this clamp because I didn't have one this long. But this is a lot different than having to use three to four clamps to clamp separate scales to a full tang knife. Using one clamp for a glue up was actually pretty cool. Once we got that all nice and dried and cured overnight, it was time to cut the excess off. I didn't want to have to use the 2x72 to grind all of this off because it would have just created a ton of dust in the shop. So I figured let's go ahead, cut off the excess with the porter band saw, and then once we got that part done, go ahead and start squaring everything up to the bolster area, which is what these lines are representing right here. This is what's even with the bolster. And I wanted to get that part set up so that everything else was easy to line up. Now one of the things that I wanted to do on this knife was make the bolster actually be flat with the spine of the knife. I wanted everything to transition from the handle to the blade seamlessly so that you didn't feel any of that. And I haven't seen many hidden tang knives like that and I thought you know this is something that makes sense to me so I'm going to try that out. Now, one of the things that we do after that is put some guidelines all the way around the blade and then just grind a 45 degree angle all the way around the handle itself and if I was to just leave it with a 45 degree angle all the way around the handle would have been really bulky so I needed to go through and use that 45 as a starting point to start rounding everything and that's what I'm going to do right here where we have our handle horizontal and I'm just rocking it onto the 2x72 and just kind of getting an idea of where I want it to be rounded wise and then from that point I'll take it and put it vertical so that I can just match the rest of the handle to that contour that I just made where it was matching up to the bolsters. So I'm going to just slowly work that. I don't want to get too aggressive with this because this is a 36 grit belt and it will remove material very fast. So I'll kind of start setting the contour where your hand sits on it and your, your pinky and your ring finger will actually rest onto the, the handle so that I don't have to do as much on the oscillating spindle sander in that area which is what I'm focusing on right now. Now this is an 80 grit drum on the oscillating spindle sander and we just use it to be able to refine all the profile and get everything ready so that we don't have to do as much work when it comes to the hand sanding part. So each one of these steps makes it a little bit easier for us to do the next step. And this is something that is actually really easy on this knife. Pretty much all the sanding I did was this stropping motion right here. And I used 220 grit, 320 grit, 500 grit, 600 grit, and 800 grit on this particular build. Now, to make the bolster match the spine really well, I ended up going at 45 degree angles and just brought everything together to where I had a nice even finish on it and then I went through and rounded the bolster because whenever you start sanding flat on it like that on the top you square the top of it off well I still wanted to have that nice rounded edges so we had to go through and be very careful with that part while uh, while sanding it back and then we just go through finish that stropping motion for all the rest of the grits and get everything nice and smooth Now when it comes to buffing on this, it took a buff really well. And I'm just using my Harbor Freight buffing wheel on my Harbor Freight drill press that's turned up to the top speed and a green compound. 
I mean, you want to be very careful when you're doing this because even though it doesn't have an edge on it, this is still a very pointy knife. And if this catches and throws back at you, you can get hurt pretty bad. But this, uh, this definitely took a buff real well. And we'll talk more about it whenever we get into the outro, but I really like how this is turning out. All right, guys, let's go ahead and give y'all a close up of this knife. Now, hopefully the camera does it justice. We'll see how it goes. So this is where we are at. We've got our Mocha Megane right there. It's layered with 15 and 20 and copper. You can actually see the different design that's on the front of this and the bolster area right there. But that beautiful Tasmanian Myrtle right there. And then the 26 C3 blade. Now, both the material for the handle, this Tasmanian Myrtle, and this 26 C3 were supplied by Chris Steele from Australia. Just a subscriber. I love doing knife builds with stuff that subscribers send me, and uh, I just can't be any happier with this. This is my first ever hidden tang, like I said. And I mean, I feel like I got really good fit up right there between the bolster and the knife. And then trying something a little bit different and making it to where the Ricasso went straight into the bolster and it's nice and even all the way across. You can't even feel a transition. Same thing with underneath here where it goes into the finger choil. I wanted the handle to seem seamless, you know, to where it transitioned perfectly into the actual handle from the blade so that when you're holding it, it just feels super comfortable. And you can go and choke all the way up into this finger choil right here. This is rounded across the back of this so that your hand doesn't feel like it's hitting something jagged or sharp right there. But really like how this turned out and how comfortable that is in the hand. I'm interested to know what y'all think about this and how it turned out. So y'all let me know down in the comment section. Now, what I'm probably gonna do is do the sharpening of this and you know, slice and stuff and all that in the Shop Talk Tuesday episode with the Farrier's Rasp knife. Figure why not focus on just sharpening both blades on that episode and then cut stuff with both knives in that episode. So I think y'all would like that and I think that this episode's already <laughs> long enough as it is without me throwing in sharpening and stuff like that in there so I want to know what y'all think about this so let me know in the comment section down below guys that's the end of this one if y'all would give this video a thumbs up share this video with my other videos if you haven't yet subscribe to the channel thank y'all for coming by thank y'all for spending your time with me y'all have an amazing day y'all stay safe out there I'll catch y'all next time